What's going on, people? Welcome back to Curtis Shaw TV, back with another live stream today. It's Monday. It's the start of a new week. We're looking ahead to the latest transfer news and gossip. Who will Arsenal be signing? Who will they be selling? And we'll look at general transfers around the world of football as well. Big up to everyone for tuning in. Thank you very much for your support, as always. And, you know, I appreciate all the likes, comments and, uh, you know, new subscribers and the old subscribers to the channel. I didn't do a watch along last night to the Jamaica game, although I did stay up. It was a bit of a waste of time for the Jamaican fans as they lost 1-0 to the USA. They missed a few chances in the first half. Substitutions were a little bit late and America beat Jamaica 1-0. So it didn't work out for the reggae boys. I can see a lot of... Ch a lot of um, Excited Manchester United fans in the comments as uh, Fabrizio Romano has just said, here we go on Varane to Manchester United, um, which is, for me, a fantastic deal um, for United to get Varane next to Harry Maguire. Um, big loss there for Real Madrid. Big up everyone in the chat. Let's see what you're saying. Buenos Aires Guna, one week is Madison, another is Martin Odegaard, back and forth. What the... What the F are we waiting for? Test the waters and make a bid. Just waiting around while the season gets closer, just like Locatelli. And you're right. Today is what, the 26th of July? The season starts on the 13th of August. And Arsenal have still got work to do. You know, there's still work that needs to be done there. There are still gaps in our team. I think at the start of this season or the end of last season, if I'd have said to you, what are the biggest things that need to be addressed in this Arsenal team? I think most people would have said a centre midfield partner for Thomas Partey, a right back to replace um, a right back to replace Hector Bellerin. And we still haven't, you know, brought in players for those two positions. So we've still got work to do. There is time to go, but it would be nice to see those guys, you know, brought in earlier to give them a chance to get used to the Arsenal team, you know. But listen, we see what happens. Um, Varane is the Phil Jones on a Mediterranean diet. <laughs> Josh, bro. Man said Phil Jones, you know. Now, listen, I think it's a good signing, but it is what it is. Uh, Lacazette being linked with Atletico again. Yeah, I saw that they're saying it could be an alternative to, um, to your boy, uh, who is it, Griezmann. They like Griezmann, obviously. They're trying to get him in a swap deal. Um, but Gola reporting um, that they are ready to make an offer of £13 million uh, for Lacazette, which for me is a ridiculous offer. £13 million for Lacazette. Um, but they're actually saying Arsenal may be willing to negotiate it. So we'll have to see. I will bring that up on screen shortly, actually about Lacazette, but for me, £13 million for Lacazette is is a little bit too cheap, in my opinion, but it does say he's a big, big admirer of him, um, and they could be about to go back in for him. Let me let me just share you the story, um, so you lot can give me your opinions. Atletico Madrid are set to make an opening bid of £13 million for Alexandria Lacazette. Diego Simeone is a huge admirer. And, of course, Lacazette was about to join Atletico just before he joined Arsenal. He joined Atletico. They were banned from making transfers. And Arsenal obviously swooped in and signed him. £13 million. We, we heard yesterday that Arsenal were maybe willing to let him go for £15 million. So if their opening offer is £13 million, I don't think they'll be too far away from negotiating that. And I think... Lacazette would be willing to go to Atletico. They're the champions of Spain. Thomas Lamar is his good friend as well. I think that deal would make a lot of sense for Lacazette. You know, apparently they're looking for a striker that can hold the ball up and bring people into play. And listen, Lacazette works in that sense. Uh, Marvu said, Lacazette out, Tammy in. Thanks, Arsenal. Oh, mate, listen, if that happens... Uh, I've been very positive lately. If we do that, then you may see that other side to me again. But we'll have to see. But it seems like this could happen. Um, apparently, Simeone was set on swapping Saul for, for Griezmann. But they're saying that deal is going to be very difficult to get done because uh, Atletico Madrid want money as well. 
Um, and but Barcelona want money as well. Sorry, so and Atletico are not willing to pay that extra money. So that deal may hit a stalemate. They want a striker. Luis Suarez is in his thirties, and I think Lacazette. Yeah, I think you're right. Lacazette with Luis Suarez could be a good partnership because Lacazette is very good at dropping into those little pockets, and then Suarez on the last defender. Seems like it could happen. Greeny man said, scratching my head daily. I'm telling you, man, that's what Arsenal do. Knots 21, Abraham makes sense as we love Chelsea's leftovers. You can see it. You can see it. Um, Tafferman said, push them for 17.5. If you can't get that, take 15 minute, uh, minimum 15 simple. I mean, the problem Arsenal have got now, he's got 11 months left on his contract and he's got um, a £170,000 a week contract. You're not going to get much money for him. He's 30 years of age. You'll be lucky to get 15, 20 for him, especially the way Arsenal do business when they're selling players. Tammy loves Arsenal. Take him. I mean, listen, he can love Arsenal all he wants. Is he good enough? Yeah, he's six foot four, but, you know, is he good enough? He needs a lot of service, Tammy Abraham. Uh, he misses a lot of clear cut chances as well. And even for a guy of six foot four, I don't think he's that great in the air. You know, I don't see Tammy score loads of towering headers the way somebody like Giroud used to. So it, we'll have to see. But this story, I think, may have legs to it. Of course, they had uh, Moussa Dembele on loan last season from Lyon. He's gone back to Lyon and apparently Atletico Madrid will not be signing him. Um, so it looks as if they are looking for a striker and they don't have a lot of money to spend. So someone like Lacazette, at 15 million, initial offer of 13 million would make sense for them. Uh, Jack said, take 15 and get Ings for 20. I mean, Ings has got a year left on his deal, but the reports are still that Southampton are going to ask for around 40 million for him. I think they're prepared to let him run down that contract and go for nothing um, rather than selling him on the cheap. Why would any Arsenal fan ever want another Chelsea flop? Especially, you know, some players have flopped at big clubs and gone to other clubs and done really well, but... I wouldn't say Tammy is somebody that you look at and think I would really take a risk on him at 40 million. So let's see what happens with that one, man. But the Lacazette going would probably mean that that Tammy Abraham deal does have some legs to it, you know. So we'll have to see on that one. Dominic said, one big no to Tammy. We got a better striker in Balogun. I would rather give Balogun a chance or, or move Martinelli central than sign Tammy. I really would. Um, so we'll have to see on that anyway. Um, let's have a look at the headline of this video. I think you guys saw it. I saw a lot of you in the comments talking about it. And it was another Real Madrid number 10 who we're looking at is Isco. Now, for me, with Isco, three or four years ago, I would have been singing and dancing, saying, what a signing. This guy's one of the best creative number 10s. Champions League winner in the Spain team, magic on the ball. We would have been all over it. He would have probably cost 60, 70 million at that time. But he's had two years of just pure injuries and he's been on the bench. So there is an element of risk associated with this deal because we don't know what level um, that Isco is operating at anymore. He hasn't really played on a consistent basis for a while. And he's on big wages, close to £200,000 a week. And he's 29 years of age as well. They're talking about a permanent deal. Uh, I mean, I'm looking, he played 25 games last year, no goals and two assists, which is not a good season, although a lot of them were off the bench. The year before, 23 goals, one goal and two assists. So in the last two seasons, you're looking at four assists and one goal. I mean, that is not good reading. Now, I know a lot of those appearances have been off the bench. When you look at 2016, 17, 10 goals, eight assists, you know, that was that was Isco at his very, very best. At 29 on 200 grand a week, I think this is a dangerous, dangerous bit of business. It may, it may look 15 million on the surface, but this would be a way more expensive deal than that um, when you account his wages his signing on fee if they could get him on loan it's not the end of the world but if you're buying him on a permanent deal which this deal says that they want him out on a permanent I think it's a very very big risk and for me I would rather see somebody like you're saying here Akash I would rather see a Madison 
um, brought in, who's 24, who has a long-term future. Like I said, if we could get Isco on loan, I would take a gamble. If you if there was nothing really out there as number 10s, they said Isco for a year on loan, not the end of the world. But if they're saying buy him on a permanent 200 grand a week, it's a very, very big risk. Physically, he's put on a little bit of weight. You know, he looks a lot heavier since he's had these injuries. Would he be able to deal with the speed of the Premier League? I'm just not sure, but I get the impression that we're starting to look for the cheap options. And that's what worries me, you know, with Arsenal. We get linked with these bigger players sometimes, 60, 70 million, and then next minute we're looking for the loan. Like I said, and I always say with every link on here, there's no there's no definites. Arsenal may have no interest in him, and this is purely speculation and paper talk. So I'm not going to start hammering Arsenal saying that they shouldn't be looking at Isco. But what I'm saying for me, I would rather spend a little bit more money and get somebody, in my opinion, who is better. You know, that that's what I would be doing. I would be looking for, I would rather sign Madison than Isco, even though he costs four times the price. You're getting a guy five years younger on less wages who knows the Premier League. He's settling in period will be a lot quicker. So what do you guys think? Would you take Isco? 15 million, 200k a week. What, what would your thoughts be on it? Let me know. When are we going to learn? I, I know, man, you know, Arsenal love a bargain. You know, they love that sale rack in TK Maxx. They'll they'll go for it. If it's a name brand as well, they're all over it. And Isco is a name brand. Uh, Gioni said, uh, Madison dream over. It's not looking good, although they did say it could go later in the window. Rudy said, get Pereira from West Brom, a player that I like. He was being linked uh, for 15 to 20 million, which for me is is a no-brainer as well. Mini Boss said Madison is overpriced, though. We learnt from Pepe. I mean, I think Madison has done enough to prove that he's worth a big price tag. You know, we're about to spend 50 million on Ben White, who's had one season in the Premier League. I think Madison has done more than he has done in the Premier League. You know, Pepe was always going to be a risk because he'd never played. Uh, Europa League or, or, or Champions League. He'd had one or two seasons in the French League and it was 72 million as well. You know, Madison's been in the Premier League, I think, three, three years now. Um, gets like 10 goal, 15 goal contributions. You know, so I think it's a little bit different in that sense. Pepe scoring 20 goals next year. I think Pepe's going to have a big season. He's looked very good in pre-season. Man said, Isk, no, you don't want nothing to do with him now. I mean, the funny thing is the story is obviously extended with Real Madrid. And once again, we're being linked with Odegaard. One minute, Odegaard has left the club. He's never going to play for us again. He's got a big season at Real Madrid. And a few weeks later, he's on his way back, according to reports. Um, so this story um, came out of the um, Spanish publication Cadena. And they've said Martin Odegaard is unhappy at Real Madrid. And the report says, I think Odegaard is going to leave Real Madrid. I've seen him very disconnected. And now, of course, Carlo Ancelotti is the new manager. And um, he said initially that he didn't think Martin Odegaard was Real Madrid's standard. This was when they bought him years ago. He said it was a bit of a publicity stunt and he didn't think he was good enough to play for Real Madrid. Obviously, he's improved over the years. He's had free loan spells and they are looking to sell players. I think the problem that Real Madrid have got, they're going to have to sell two or three players and a lot of their fringe players are not that wanted by other clubs. Obviously, Ramos has gone, Varane has gone. Um, they've got other players like Ceballos and that. But I think because they know that Arsenal are ready to buy Odegaard, it may be a situation that they sacrifice him and allow him to go. Um, I don't see Odegaard getting in the Real Madrid team this season. I think he'll be a squad player. I think with the likes of Hazard, Vinicius Jr., Rodrigo, Benzema, they've still got Modric, Tony Cruz and um, Casemiro. I don't see Odegaard getting regular game time there. I think he'll be a squad player off the bench. So when you've spent six months at Arsenal playing every week, um, you don't want to sit on the bench at any football club. So we'll have to see on that one. Would you guys want Odegaard back? They're now saying it could be around £35 million. I personally wasn't overly impressed with him last season. I do think he's a talented player. 
I just wonder, is he that goal-scoring number 10 that I feel like we lack? I know a lot of Arsenal fans really like him. I do think he's a talented player, but is he the one for Arsenal? Tim said, Pete, 100 to 1 for the golden boot. I mean, I can't see him winning the golden boot, but it's a good bet. You put £10 on that, you win £1,000. Uh, I might go for that 20 to 1 Aubameyang bet for top goal scorer. I think he's going to shock people. Big up broads, everyone like and subscribe. We're nearly at 30k. Yeah, we're on course, people. We said the start of the Premier League season, but I think we, we could hit that within the next week or so, to be fair. Um, big up Newton's Gaming with a super chat said, Ben White's a great sign-in, not even in his prime. Listen, I think he's... A, we're going to talk about Ben White shortly anyway, but I, I agree that he's a... I think he's a very good sign-in. I think people naturally in football now, the price will affect the way you judge a player. It's just natural. People people don't look at Harry Maguire and say, well, hang on a minute. He's Manchester United's best centre-back, which means he's a good signing. People say he cost 80 million. He doesn't look like 80 million. You know, so naturally people talk about the price when they judge how good a player is. And people will always compare it to a player that costs similar. So now every defender that costs 70 million or something like that, people will go, well, Van Dyke costs 75 million and he's the best centre back in the world. So anyone that costs a similar amount, if you're not as good as Van Dyke, they're going to say, well, it's not worth it. I personally still think, and I agree with this, Mukta. I listen, I think Ben White's a good signing. He's a ball playing centre back. He's similar to John Stones in that sense. I think teams that want to play football from the back, they need a centre back like that. I just think the issue that people have got with Ben White is £50 million. £50 million at Chelsea, Manchester United, Manchester City is not the same as £50 million at Arsenal. That £50 million has a much bigger effect on Arsenal. You know, Manchester City bought Nathan Ake last summer. £40 million. Everyone goes, right, that's their centre-back for the summer. £40 million. Two weeks later, they bought Ruben Diaz for £65 million. They just looked at Nathan Ake for not quite as good as we thought. 65 million for Ruben Diaz. Arsenal don't operate like that. We don't have that owner that Manchester City have got. So if we spend 50 million on Ben White and it doesn't work, then we're like, oh no, we're in a we're in a situation again where what are we going to do? If he costs 30, 35 million, I think everybody would be celebrating it. I think it's the price that is worrying people. But I always say if a player does well, people don't talk about the price. You only talk about the price when a player is struggling. He's going to have a lot of pressure on him <clears throat> because, you know, Arsenal fans, we're, we're always, we're always, not always, but sometimes we're impatient. We want to see instant results. Um, and like I said, I think Ben White is a better centre-back probably than the ones we've got. I think the issue is how well he does with no leader next to him. He had a leader in Lewis Dunk next to him at Brighton, at Arsenal, playing next to Gabriel, who is still a young defender himself. We're still going to have to see how well he adjusts with no no leader there. And a lot of the time, Brighton played with three at the back as well. Hey, big up, Ray Agnesco. Good to see you after the AFTV match. Hey, big up, man. Big up for your support, man. Uh, William said, fifth string England centre-back. Can't even get in the England squad and got in their team due to a Trent injury. Do you know what, though? I, I don't get too caught up in that. You know, I really don't. You look at Wan Bissaka at Man United, not even in the England squad. Is he a bad right back? No. You know, um, they're very Mason Greenwood didn't get in the squad. James Madison, who Arsenal linked with, didn't get in the squad. So I hear what you're saying, but I don't use that as a as a judgment for saying whether a player is good enough or not, you know. He, I still I still think he could be a good player. Brighton's player of the season. I mean, I was surprised at that. I thought it was going to be Basuma, to be honest. Neil said Ben White is better than Holding and Pablo Mari. I mean, I really hope he is for 50 million. I think Ben White's a good player. I honestly do. I think if we create a good setup around him, uh, I think there'll be room for him to thrive there. A little picture here. I mean, the first three signings. Big up to now Arsenal, man. He makes some great edits, man. Go and check out his account. Um, of the players and stuff. Obviously, this is our first bit of business of the window, is these three. Dharma Chef and Sky Sports were reporting yesterday that he will complete his medical on Wednesday. Uh, I believe 
that Ben White has had to isolate for five days due to the fact that he'd been in Italy and in Greece. Um, so when he's come back to the country, he has to isolate. So I think this is why the deal won't be completed until Wednesday. Um, he came back to England over the weekend. So listen, I've always said for a long time that I want to see Arsenal sign players in the Premier League. I think sometimes you should buy players from your own league because the adjustment period is often a lot easier. They know everything about the country, the language and, and everything. But then on the flip side, the problem is you're going to have to pay more money. You could probably buy a defender in the French League or the Bundesliga or Italy who is as good as Ben White, who may cost you £30 million. You know, Demerol, a player that we, we were being linked with, I think, under Unai Emery, a defender that I rate quite highly at Juventus. He's being linked with a £35 million move now, you know? Um, and he is a very good centre-back. You've seen Canate leave... Um, RB Leipzig go to Liverpool for 35 million. You naturally pay more. And he's English. Because of this whole Brexit situation, clubs now have to have a certain amount of English players or British players in their squad, which means their prices will elevate. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I think the picture looks good. Someone said, there, yeah, I can't lie. I like the picture. I think the picture looks very good there, man. Um, he suits the kit. Let's hope he lives up to expectations, man. And listen, he's 23. He's good on the ball. He's young. He ticks the boxes. It's better than us signing David Luiz at the back end of his career for two years because Chelsea are throwing him out. You know, it's a young player. He's hungry. He wants to come to Arsenal. All the stories are saying that despite interest from other clubs, he always wanted to come to Arsenal. And that, for me, is a breath of fresh air. I'm sick of hearing, our oh, Locatelli wants Juve. But if Juve doesn't happen, it will just take Arsenal because it's convenient. We don't want players like that. Ben White saying, listen, I want to join Arsenal. I, you know, this is a club I want to join. Let's embrace it. Let's not get too caught up on the transfer fee. It's not our money. We want them to spend money. I think we're more caught up in, well, we still need the centre midfielder. So we don't want that 50 million to stop us maybe spending another 50 million on a midfielder. Uh, Chris Fraser said, uh, White's better than any centre back we have at the moment. So I'm happy with it. Uh, Yannick said, can't lie, that kit that looks kind of high. Yeah, look, it does look nice, the kit now. Uh, big up Leo Messi surfing and sneaker said, uh, I'm sorry, but the prices on these players are ridiculous, especially Madrid asking 35 million for Odegaard. Come on. It's, it's crazy, isn't it? Because everybody is short of money in this window, it seems, apart from the Premier League clubs. They just seem to find money all the time. Uh, so clubs are actually trying to sell their, their their leftovers, their squad players for more money because they're trying desperately to earn money. I think naturally when these Premier League clubs come knocking, they probably add 20% on the price because they think, here we go, here's an opportunity for us to make money um, that they need. Uh, Marvu said, free bang average players, let's be real. Listen, and I'll say this, I'll add balance to it. I'm not going to sit here and say, wow, free signings that are going to get us, you know, jumping and going crazy and going to make us order all the new kits. Listen, Nuno Tavares, second choice left back at Benfica. Albert Lekonga, young player from Anderlecht, Ben White, centre back for Brighton. They're, they're not name brand. They're not name brand signings for real. You look at Man United. They've signed Sancho. They're going to get Varane. They are marquee transfers. They are big, big names. But sometimes, and I'm not trying to justify it. I'm just trying to add a little balance to it. We've seen big name brand names come to the Prem before and struggle. A lot of them at Manchester United, Falcao, Di Maria, these players, Varane back in the day. Big names that haven't adjusted. And on the flip side, we've seen teams like Liverpool Sign Wijnaldum from relegated Newcastle, Robertson from relegated Hull City. You know, Firmino was a number 10 in Germany, became one of the top strikers in the Prem. You know, Mane came from Southampton, you know, the, Trent came through the system, the youth team. So I said at the start of the season, Arsenal are not going to make many name brand signings this summer. They haven't got the money. They're not in Europe. They're not the attractive proposition they were. What we need is the right signings with the right temperament. I think they're looking for young, hungry, quick, energetic players 
who had a little spring in our step. So I, I don't think you're going to see too many name brand signings at Arsenal this summer, man. Um, big old Anthony with a super chat. He said, bringing back Odegaard is to the detriment of ESR. Arteta will play him out wide to accommodate Odegaard at Cam. Ben White will do well for us, trust. I think the thing is, he clearly wants to play with a 10. And uh, But I hear what you're saying in that, because a lot of the time last season, I was frustrated with the fact that he was playing Smith Rowe on the left ahead of maybe a Martinelli or a Pepe, who are natural wingers who should be playing there, um, because he was trying to accommodate Odegaard and Smith Rowe into the same team. The problem is you can't have one number 10 because if he gets injured, then what do you do? You're back to square one. You don't have a number 10. And Smith Rowe has had a few muscle injury problems um, over the past few years when he's been at the football club. Uh, Konya says, uh, talk that talk. You have to, man. You have to. Don said, Firmino isn't one of the best strikers in the Prem. I mean, listen, for the last few years, maybe not last year, to be fair, he was pretty poor, but he's been top quality, man. He's not the goal-scoring striker, so he doesn't get you 25 goals a season. But we can all admit a lot of Liverpool's success was, you know, he was a major part of that. That false nine, dropping into them pockets, allowing Mane and Salah to, to get in behind. I think you ask any Liverpool fan especially, they tell you how important Firmino is to that front three, man. He's been he's been top quality for them. Uh, Tavares giving me Alfonso Davis vibes. Wow. Don't get too carried away, you know. Uh, even if he's half as good as Alfonso Davis, we'll, we'll take that. Curtis, who's the backup uh, number 10 if Smith Rowe gets injured? He's pretty injury prone. Uh, I mean, who would we play there? Uh, the names that I've got in my head, I'm thinking, could you play Pepe 10? Could you play Saka 10? Um, could you play Smith Rowe 10? Uh, obviously, Smith, oh, Smith Rowe actually is the 10, sorry. Could you play Willock 10? But I think Willock will probably go to Newcastle. So, I don't know. No, in Arsenal, we'll play Willian 10. You know what I mean? We'll play Willian. Um, Tim said, still need to get rid of six hanging around like a bad smell. Listen, you make a great point there, Tim. And I said this, um, these three are our first batch of signings. This is the first group. I think we're going to need another group. We need, in two weeks' time, to have another picture upon this screen with another three players on it. You know, I want to see a goalkeeper, a right back, and I want to see a centre midfielder and a, and a number 10 as well. That's probably the four that we need overall during the window. This just needs to be the start. We need a few bigger ones than these. And as I said, I don't think they'll all be name brands, but they need to be the right ones. Uh, Lacazette at 10. I mean, maybe. I think we've tried it before. Does he have that like that passing ability on the ball that a midfielder would have? But what I think now, and going back to what Tim just said, man said Leno in the 10, wouldn't surprise me. Um, going back to what Tim said, I don't expect Arsenal to sign too many players until we shift a few. I think now that we've brought these three in, once Ben White is confirmed, I think the club are going to have a huge wage bill and a, and a very big squad considering we have no Europe. We still need to move uh, Renarsson, Kalasinac, um, Elneny for me, I would move, Bellerin, Eddie and Ketio, um, Granit Xhaka still hasn't gone. There's a lot of players there. You know, Reese Nelson, you've got a decision to make on him as a youngster as well. Lacazette, does he move? He's being linked now with moves. The club are going to have some big decisions to make. You're looking at six or seven players that potentially need to be moved out. And clearly we're struggling to get rid of anybody at the moment, which is why it's moving so slow. Because even Torreira, sorry, yeah, Torreira. Torreira apparently is back at pre-season this week. So what happens with him? And big old Alfred with a super chat. He said, Arteta only plays Odegaard to convince him to come back. You can't convince a player to come back if he was riding the bench. Emil Smith-Rowe was always his starter. And now he's given Smith-Rowe the new contract and the number 10 shirt. Um, is it going to be harder to convince um, Martin Odegaard to come back? Other clubs may look at him. Uh, Joe, he said, uh, Edward for centre-forward. I mean, listen, obviously, if... If Lacazette was to go to Atletico, we would have a situation where we would need 
uh, a striker. They're being linked with Tammy. Would you rather get Edward? Edward's £18 million, less than half of what Tammy. But how good is he? Uh, Neil said, Odegaard, if possible, else uh, Sabitza. Basuma in centre mid and a backup keeper, Johnston. Listen, I, I like a lot of them names there. Um, Sabitza for me is a very good player. I'm shocked that no one has bought him. Basuma, I think every Arsenal fan wants Basuma, apart from uh, the manager. And Sam Johnston, as we said before, half the price of um, half the price of Ramsdale. And yet we, we don't seem to want him, you know, um, which is, it seems to be the Arsenal way. Zach said, Edward is file. Arsenal on sale. Well, listen, we need, we need the club to be bought. Uh, Jay Mill said Arsenal's wage structure is a mess. No one wants our players because they can't pay the wages. Arsenal have had this habit over the last few years of bringing players in and for some reason just weighing them in with huge wages when they don't even really justify them. You know, some of these guys are on crazy wages. Um, so, yeah, I don't understand why why we've paid these wages to players. Um Torreira is the best DM we got at the club. I wonder if there's a situation where Torreira ends up with a future at Arsenal. It's interesting as well that we keep playing Ainsley Maitland-Niles, a player that I thought the club were definitely going to get rid of. Um, I thought he had no future at the football club, but then on the weekend, Hector Bellerin and Joe Willock were not involved. They're now saying that Bellerin's agent is... A, flying over to Milan to negotiate a move to Inter. And they're saying that Joe Willock is, is still in talks with Newcastle about going there. Steve Bruce was talking about Joe Willock at the weekend. I think personally Joe Willock will go to Newcastle on loan with an obligation to buy him next summer. I think the club are desperate to make some money. And I don't think Willock's value will ever be higher than it is now. Uh, big up Anthony with a super chat again, bro. He said, in truth, I really don't think we need another 10 cam. If ESR gets injured, we can switch to a 4-3-3, which I'm convinced is Arteta's favoured formation. I've said for a long time, bro, that our midfield at times is not good enough to accommodate a number 10. When you play with a number 10, those two midfielders behind him, they've got to be seriously good. You know, they've got to almost be able to let you go and do your own thing while those two cover. At the moment, outside of Thomas Partey, I don't think we do have a good enough um, two-man midfield without adding to those players. So, yeah, I agree with you. I think you could see Arsenal go to 4-3-3. He may even use Smith-Row out wide at times and play with no number 10. And then you could potentially play with Partey and and I don't know, could it be Torreira? Could it be Lekonga? And then maybe a new other one DM and two number eight. So get it. Well, he, I think he tried that, didn't he? Against, um, was it, uh, who do we play? Villarreal. Well, he played like two number tens in Odegaard and, um, and Smith Rowe, but tried to play them as eights and, and party got overran. Uh, big old Alfred with a super chat. He said, Curtis, if you had uh, 2.8 billion and that's all you had, would you buy Arsenal? Just want to see how much you love Arsenal. Alfred, I would go nowhere near Arsenal if that's all I had. I ain't going to let Arsenal bankrupt me. If I've got myself in that position, I ain't gambling it all on Arsenal. Maybe if I had 20 billion, then I'll spend the 2.8 on Arsenal, you know. Or maybe if I had 10 billion, I'll spend the 2.8. But I'm not putting all everything I've got into Arsenal so they can, you know, keep losing value and lose all my money. So, nah, I love Arsenal, Alfred, but nah, not that much. Um, Ivanson said, we need to replace Xhaka with Locatelli. I mean, we need to sell him first. We need to sell him. Daniel Ferreira Curtis would buy the planet. Bro, I see this thing with rappers now. They're buying planets. Um, I don't know, man. You know, the world's crazy now. I see some of these rappers in America. They've bought planets. Um, for millions of pounds that they'll never get to, never see. They're just being told they own it. Um, Richard Reed said, big up, big C, just checking in. Saw the Fulham highlights yesterday. We're like vampires with them crosses. Still can't defend set pieces. Millwall, Millwall. But yeah, I hear you. Another set piece. Um, I think they were saying now that that's five goals conceded in pre-season and four of them... Um, four of them from set pieces, which is not good. 
Um, it's crazy. We need to work on that quick. You can buy land on the moon. Ah, oh, it's crazy. Like you said, these rappers, they got too much money. They're just trying to avoid tax, man. Yeah, I bought a planet and you can, <laughs> and I don't have to pay tax. You know, it's all kind of mad things. I bought a little patch of land on the moon that I own. Oh, it's mad. Uh, Colin said, Curtis, people forgetting that without a number 10, creatively, we really struggled. Playing 4 3 3, we would need two more world class number eights. I hear you on that. Um, you've got to have at least one, maybe two midfielders that can get into there and create. I think our would be ideal in a three man midfield, um, which is why I'm surprised that we haven't gone for him. Man, we need Tammy. Come on, yo. I don't think we need Tammy, you know. Tammy can stay at Chelsea. Alex said, who's, who's selling these planets? Yeah, that's it. I don't know where the planet's coming from, you know. Arsenal will probably sell planets soon, man. They're selling crypto. They're selling kits. They're doing all of it. You see, range, yeah, Rangers beat Real Madrid in a friendly, man. That's what I'm saying. You can't get too caught up in the friendly results, although sometimes you do when the emotion gets the better of you, you know. Man said two billion cuts will be a love I <laughs> nah, but I'm staying away from there. Over 1400 of you in here, man. Smash a like and subscribe, people. We're about 600 away, I think, from 30k. So if we can hit that this week, man, that'll be massive. Alfred, big up, bro, with a super chat. So whoever's selling them, these planets needs to come and handle Arsenal's transfer business. Do you know how good you are to sell something nobody owns? You're actually selling something that nobody owns that you're never gonna see physically. You're never going to land on that planet, you know, but a man's spending millions to say, I own a planet. It might not even exist. They might have just made that up, told you the name of it, showed you some star in the galaxy and took a couple million dollars off you to pay for it. Come in, man. Tell him, yo, we've got a right back uh, called the Hector Bellerin planet. Yeah, you'll never see him. He can't throw the ball. <laughs> And you can have him for just twenty million dollars, you know. It's all yours. It's all yours. Yeah, caps. Yeah, people. Don't forget to vote. Link in the description. Best new content creator football content awards. It's in the description. After the they ripped me off last summer, so we will give it one more year, and then that's it. This is their last chance because they done me last year. Them man are selling ice to Eskimos. I'm telling you, man, it's mad. It's absolutely mad. Sammy said, Big C, do you think Arsenal are looking for young players so they don't have to buy players on the future as they will be getting good with age? Yeah, I think so. I think Arsenal are looking at it going, listen, if you want to have a self-sustaining model, um, it needs to be a team that where players are going to blow up. If you buy La Conga, Tavares, Ben White, you go, you've got your Smith Rose, Saka, Martinelli, Pepe's still a good age, Gabriel. You're hoping that in a year or two, some of those guys are worth double what they cost. And then you can move forward. Nah, a defeat yesterday, man. It wasn't a good day. We lost. Jamaica lost. Yeah, it was it was not a good one, man. Uh, Samuel Lowe said, Curtis, imagine managing to have so much money on your hands that you spend it on a planet. That's it, man. You gotta be living good, man. If you're if you're buying planets, voted for you the other day. Hey, big up, bro. Appreciate that. Let's get into uh, <laughs> let's get into another transfer. This one's another merry-go-round. It gets to the point where I don't even want to talk about some of these, but I'm just here to keep you updated, you know. So we're gonna talk about the Sheffield United goalkeeper. You guessed it, Aaron Ramsdale is back in the news, and. Um, this is the transfer I think all Arsenal fans want us to avoid. Uh, there are a few who, who think he's decent, but for me, I would stay well, well away from this, as you know. And um, the latest is Sheffield United expect Arsenal to make an official approach for Aaron Ramsdale later this week. Their first since making the goalkeeper one of their leading transfer targets it's crazy how you get different stories in it. Some some of the press are saying we've made two bids. Now this guy's saying this is the first official offer. What baffles me? At this point, I turn off everything and I can see some of your reactions. This last sentence just wows me. Um, Sheffield United believe Ramsdale is worth £40 million. I mean... I don't understand what they're seeing in this guy. I don't get it. I've watched this guy for two seasons. 
he's a decent young keeper. He's average. He's nothing special. I don't even know. I, w- I wouldn't even be that happy if we paid 20 million for him. I don't even know about 15 million. 40 million pound. Whatever contact you've got with them at this point, I'd just block them. If you're talking on WhatsApp, you're emailing, you're you're calling them, I'm blocking someone's number. If you're asking me for 40 million for Ramsdale, that's just cheeky at this point. Jack says 40 million, I wouldn't pay 40 quid. I'm telling you, I give him 40 quid, I want some change back. You know what I mean? I need a tenner back or something. 40 million pound for Ramsdale. It's crazy. We're out here getting offered 13 million pound for Lacazette. And selling Gwen Doozy for 10 million, who's a 21-year-old French international. We're getting we're we're being quoted 40 million for Ramsdale. Just lock that off. What like why do Arsenal want him so much anyway? Like it's not like he's an unbelievable goalkeeper. They want to settle the money they paid for Rian Brewster. Yeah, but you know, we shouldn't be the club that's stupid enough to go and pay for it. Um just walk away from this deal, please. It makes no sense. Sheffield United can just probably see some desperation from Arsenal and they're thinking, you know what? We can earn some real big money on this one. Um, I don't understand why Arsenal are going for it so much, but I would stay well, well away from it um, and go for someone else. I, I just think to spend £40 million on a guy from Sheffield United, they've just been relegated. So I would I would stay well away from that one. Hopefully it doesn't happen. But like I said, I don't even like talking about it every day, but it just seems to pop up every day. Different stories come out. So we'll have to see on this one. Um, I've got one more bit of transfer news regarding Arsenal and potentially bringing someone in. I've seen a few of you um, putting it in the comments and it's um, Swiss international midfielder. Uh, not Granite Xhaka either, um, but it's Denis Sakaria. Denis Sakaria, who plays for Borussia Mönchengladbach. He's, uh, he's a highly rated midfielder. A lot of you may have seen him in the um, in the Euros for Switzerland. Very energetic. He's 24 years of age. He's quite tall. Um, quick defensive midfielder who um, has been playing in the Bundesliga. Munching Gladbach. I'm just looking him up now. Yeah, 24 years of age. Um, he played 25 league games last year. No reds, only one goal, one assist, but he is a DM. But he is quite highly rated. I mean, they're bringing up football manager stats on him in here and all sorts. But yeah, no, for me, he's a good player. I've seen a bit of him. Um, and I, I've seen Arsenal link with him before. Now, the story says that he has told Munching Gladbach, he will not extend his contract. Uh, apparently, he is available um, at the right price. The club have said they won't get in his way um, and they're willing to sell him for around £30 million. Manchester City being linked with him as well. Um, for anybody who's seen a bit more of him, I've seen him a few times, but some of you may have seen him a lot more than me playing for Switzerland or Munching Gladbach. Um, let me know what you think. Doesn't strike me as being great on the ball. Saw him a few times in the Euros giving the ball away. He didn't fill me with conviction that that's the kind of player that we need next to Thomas Partey. Um, so for me, it's a dodgy one at 30 million. Colin Burns said, I'm starting to think that if we signed a League Two player and he was English, we would still pay 30 million minimum. English tax is mad. Uh, Zachariah, oh, apologies, bro. Um, Paul said, saw him in the Euros, bang average. Uh, Alexander said, Sambi Conga will be clear of Zachariah in 18 months. You can mark this comment. Uh, Zachariah couldn't start for Swiss over Frula, who is meaty. Um, but yeah, we'll have to see in that sense. It seems as if um, people don't rate him that much. He was injured during the Euros. Um, yeah, like, like I said, I saw him a few times, but I wasn't fully convinced by him at all. Um, big old Alfred, he said the entire Sheffield United team is worth 50 million. Do you know what I mean? And they're trying to get 40 on the goalkeeper who's just had back to back relegations, man. Childhood Arsenal fan, I suppose. Yeah, I'm sure that will pop up at some stage, won't it? He was an Arsenal fan. Set, he said he just came back from a torn ACL. That makes it very risky at that point. I mean, I'm just uh, I'm just looking, looking him up now. To, for me personally, what I've seen of him. Um, 
I wouldn't go near him at 30 million. From what I've seen of him, he's not better than than someone like Basuma for me. Uh, he's got 12 months left on his contract. And like I said, the club are willing to let him go. But uh, I'm just looking here. Yeah, expected to drop after long-term injury. You're right. Yeah, long-term knee injury. For me, that's a no-go. It's a no-go. I wouldn't go for it. I think Basuma is better than him. And like I said, I think that Mikel Arteta wants a ball player, not somebody high energy who maybe, you know, he's, he's getting about the pitch and tackling. Pedri from Barca is a must listen. We ain't going to get Pedri. He's a future superstar for Barcelona. There's no way they're going to sell him. Uh, BF said um, Bernardo Silva. Yeah, I did a video the other day about Bernardo Silva. A lot of fans weren't convinced that we could get him. Um, despite the links, you know, I did put up quite a decent argument for why we may be able to get him. You know, the link with Arteta at City. Apparently, he wants to stay in the Prem. He wants regular football to get in the Portuguese team. But he was being linked with Bayern Munich. And at that point, you think we've got no chance. Uh, Tom said, perfect signing. We always signed injured or injury prone players. We do. Uh, mod me, bro. Yeah, I may look at some extra mods if we're... Um, if we're going to change up a bit. I see a few people spamming, but not too bad. People, I'm out of here. Thank you very much for tuning in. Appreciate all your support as always. Make sure you like the video. There's 1,500 of you in here. Can we hit 1,000 likes again? Subscribe if you haven't already. We want to try and hit 30K this week if possible. Let's, let's aim for this week. Don't forget to um, vote down below as well for best new content creator. Link is in the description below. Um, what have we got this week? Yeah, I'll be back tomorrow at two o'clock. Uh, I'm going to get some guests on this week. I'm reaching out to a few people today. Um, Arsenal apparently playing a behind closed doors friendly against Watford on Wednesday. So look out for that, people. Um, that should be, um, I don't know if Arsenal will show that on their website, but if they do, we'll try and get something for that. If it's if they show it live, we'll do a watch along for it. If not, we'll just do reaction after the game um so we'll do that yeah no problem we'll get some um we'll definitely do some collabs this week but yeah wednesday arsenal play against watford behind closed doors so um we will either do a watch along for that or a reaction after if they don't show the game live um yeah hey, don't worry that that message has been put out there don't worry i know obviously andre gray at watford so the message is getting put out to see if I can get Ben Foster on here. That would be great as well. Um, so I'll see you all tomorrow, 2 p.m. Take care, everyone. Enjoy your day. Bless. Mm -hmm.